I get this question all the time from many, 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 many people saying, you know, Dread Isle, how do I get into game design? How do I get into modding? How do I get into, you know, the whole spectrum, uh, whatever it could be. And firstly, I am not a critically acclaimed game developer in any meaning of the word. I have merely, I mean, I've worked on plenty of modding projects. I've worked on games released on Steam. I've done this for this. I've gotten offers from game developers. You know, not all the time, but, you know, a good amount of the time. And there's a few that I've accepted. One recently, and now I'm starting an indie project. Uh, like, right now, I'm in the works on that. Uh, and I'll have more information for that coming up as well. But, uh, and I know the business. I know people in it. I know millionaires in the business. No, I know of and I've spoken with millionaires in the business. I know what to do. And first of all, when you're talking about getting into game design, you need to set your level, your sights lower uh, in the beginning. Firstly, uh, what are your strengths? What do you like? You know, fuck that. What do you like? Yeah, yeah. Not what are your strengths. We get to that. What do you like doing? Are you more of like, are you inclined towards, you know, level design? And modeling, which is more of a hands-on kind of like you're sculpting the environment. You're really, you're really a part of that, you know, kind of aspect of the creation of the game. Are you, are you more into sound design? Are you more into, you know, whether it's concept art or writing, and you know, all of these things should kind of go hand in hand. You shouldn't focus on one particular thing overall, but you kind of need that as an anchor point, you know, as well as being you know, at least semi-decent in the other fields. You can't just jump right in and say, okay, I'm a game developer now. You know, you got to figure out something that you can kind of tackle and learn to do it first. For instance, when I first got into gaming and making mods and getting involved in level design, uh, I uh, started with level design. I loved it. I still am really good at it. <laughs> uh, and it was, you know, it, it just it spoke to me. And it just felt natural. You know, if you're banging your head against a wall uh, trying to learn modeling, like I did, uh, maybe that specific aspect of game design is not for you, and you should leave it to someone whose aspect of game design that is for. Um, now, once you kind of get good at any particular skill, uh, you find that the ability to learn things, uh, or the ability to get good at a specific skill that is a skill in and of itself and is an easily transferable skill and like i said if you're banging your head against a wall maybe that's not good for you but once you know one thing pretty well you can pretty much get into several different things like i got straight into sound design i love sound design now and that's probably my greatest strength now but like overall like i was able to learn sound design i was able to learn you know texture uh you know what it was called you know, just 2D art, I was able to get into that. It's just the ability to learn uh, is an important skill in this field. Uh, and not to mention the networking. You Let's say now you're doing pretty well. You know, you have some skills, you have some, some assets. Uh, you maybe even have a functional mod or game up and going in some way. Uh, this is step one. Uh, you you need picture. You need a portfolio, and then you need to start networking. People hate networking. It's a nightmare. I understand this. You know, the you have to go out of your way, and it's like you have to spend almost as much time, a third of the time that you would spend on the development of whatever your project is, just speaking to other people, becoming friends with other people, getting to know other people. You know, creating a web. You know, you get on forums, you get on Reddit, you start up a channel. People start talking to you, you start talking to them, and then a kind of a, a network forms. You know, these people are very important. And what is more important are the core uh, people in that group. You know, for instance, you have your team members who help work on your mod or game. It depends. You know, maybe you're doing it solo. Uh, that, that could be an instance of, like, the development team. But then there's you know, the people who you're going to be distributing this to, because at the end of the day, when you're making a game, it's not made for yourself, it's made for the people out there. This then brings into question the importance of, you know, relationships with different people in the spectrum of the community. That's kind of a weird way to put it, let me explain. Um, there's a core group of people, like let's say you put up a mod, you put up a game on a website, now that you've had some content, 
uh, you're ready to start showing it off, getting people hyped or whatever uh, for the project. There's kind of a core group of people you'll start to notice. And this is it's going to be very, very small at first. There's going to be in recognizable names that keep coming back. Maybe there's only five. Let's say one of them is named Drump Pump 16. I don't know. Drump Pump is a constant follower of the community. He always comes to you. Your, your mod is always checking it out, right? Well... You need to focus a lot on maintaining a relationship and talking to these people. Because these people are going to spread the news of what you're up to even more. And I'm not saying treat it as a clinical, kind of like alienistic, like you're looking down at them, trying to use them for their social credibility as they spread news of your game out into the world. What I'm saying is you need to focus on being really genuinely interested in what they have to say, um, seeing what they want, becoming friends with them. You got to become actual friends with these people in a way. This is important. And if you can do that and that starts growing and you can maintain friends with as many people as you can, obviously once it hits a certain point, you can't. There's a lot of followers and a lot of people that will start. Um, it's just impossible to network with all of them. But the way to get to a point, and this is what everyone's always asking, is like, oh, I never have any followers. No one's ever looking at my stuff. It's like, well, you start by focusing on that core group of people, and it'll grow to the point where you can't keep a whole, you know, a fucking eye on it all the time. That's how you grow a fan base in a way. You know, some sometimes you put some out and it just blows up. That's happened. That happens a lot as well. But for those people who don't just have the luck of putting up a video and getting hundreds of thousands of hits, you're going to have to focus on individuals, you know, day and night, uh, as well as the creation and development of your project. And, you know, that is a whole, <laughs> all of it kind of comes together in, in, allo in an amalgam of sorts that, you know, in the end, if you do it right and you focus your energies you know, your time, your skills, everything in important uh, aspects of what you, or what you consider important, you know, all of it should come together as long as you're putting in the effort into something good, <laughs> you know, but is, most importantly, make sure that you know that you're good because uh, I was listening to a good talk by uh, Mr. Jordan Belfort, if you've seen The Wolf of Wall Street, he's talking about the kind of like four uh four levels of creating content right um for instance uh when you're first making something let's say you're first getting into level design you suck and you're not even gonna know that you suck <laughs> i'm here to tell you right now so you don't have to do what i did you suck bad when you first start anything for the most part yeah there's exceptions people are good and they start just randomly it happens but for the most part you suck let's get out of the way before the internet tells you like they told me and he spoke of four different levels of this for, for instance when you're creating something you start out unconsciously incompetent <laughs> so you're not even aware of your incompetence you just suck and eventually after a bit of time you work on it you get better you get better next thing you know you're consciously incompetent <laughs> you're like oh shit I suck I gotta work on this you know, then if you keep working on it, you keep putting in the time, you keep learning, you keep looking up these tutorials, you keep putting in every, you just keep showing up, you keep showing up and doing what you got to do. You get to the point where you're consciously competent, uh, as Jordan Belford says. Now, when you focus, you put your mind into it, you can make something good. You're like, holy crap. I'm actually good at something, you know, like this is, this map is looking good. People are responding well, this game's looking good. Feedback's good. My network, my fan base is growing, whatever. Right. Next stage. If you get to that point is unconsciously competent. This means you don't even have to try. And in fact, this is where the whole muse thing, uh, if you've heard about the muse, <laughs> it's kind of just this ethereal network of ideas that a lot of high, uh, high, status people like to say exists out there where you just kind of tune in to ideas and they kind of go through you and into this this is kind of like hippie shit whatever but you get to the point where you're unconsciously competent where you just kind of tune in you're just good at it 
You know, you just don't have to think about it. And that's where the best work comes from is when you're just tuned in, right? And that, it takes a lot of time. And it's not to say that you can't do it right away, but for the most part and for most people, any kind of skill, any kind of game design, video creation, filmmaking, you know, music creation, you know, whatever it is, is going to take a lot of time to get good at. And people, this is the biggest hurdle, and I've hit this hurdle plenty of times, believe me, uh, is kind of overshooting what you can do. And this is kind of a good thing, you know, set your goals high and whatnot. But you can overdo it to the point where you, you're like, all right, I'm starting on a project. <laughs> It's going to get it done. It's a huge project, but you're trying to get it done in three months. And suddenly you're like, oh my God, I can't do this. Like you get burnt out. You know, people hit a wall or maybe you just still suck. You just hit a wall. You're like, man, I suck. I can't do this. It's a lot of work. I could kick up my feet and watch Cartoon Network. Oh my God. The, you know, the Beverly Hills Housewives are going on. Jimmy, get over here. Flip the TV on. Let's go. Let's watch this. It's going to be great. You know, like there's t tons of distractions. You got to know what you're capable of. And, kind of, and write it all out. Sit down and figure out what you're going to be doing. Write it out. And tackle that. No matter what it is, finish something. All right? Finish something. Finish a map. Not a game. Finish a map. Finish a four-song musical score. Finish 12 texture assets. You know, finish three models. If you can do that, you can extrapolate that until you get to a point where you're capable of doing something bigger. Now I'm at a point where I'm working on a mod, uh, and I'll, I'll be releasing more information on this, but it's going to be interesting, and that's something that I can tackle, and it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> uh, and I just kind of wanted to rant for a little bit. I'm not sure why, but I felt like ranting today about this, because I get this question a lot. Uh, and if you're interested in keeping up with this project that's kind of under wraps that I'm talking about here, bef you can come along this journey with me. What I'm going to do, I'm, I'm starting to think of, is uh, film the progress of this uh, as I go along so you can kind of see what to do, you know, in a <laughs> kind of goofy, cartoonish, reality showy, uh, tutorialistic way, you know, see how it goes. So I'm, I'm, I'm toying with this. I'm writing currently. And once I know more about this, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, think about what this is incredibly disjointed rant. Uh, if you're interested in game design and take it into consideration because, you know, at the end of the day, it's about having fun. But you got to also know what you're capable of doing and what it's going to be like because it's not all rose tinted. You know, everything's going to be great and fun and shit. Like you got to, there's tons of aspects to something like this and you got to be aware of it. So thanks for watching. I don't know <laughs> if you find that useful at all. I was just kind of going off, but if you are interested in seeing more, please subscribe below, whatever, the whole stupid horror shit, you know, just check out the videos on my channel. I love you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video, whether it's a half-life or whatever the hell it will be. So I love you. Bye. Bye. And uh, we'll see you next time on Dead Isle Video. I'm Dead Isle's biggest fan. <laughs> Y'all are clubs. You're